Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. You've probably heard the term the cloud or cloud computing or cloud storage, but not everyone necessarily understands exactly what the cloud is or how to use it or what are the advantages and disadvantages for you as, as an individual person. Today we're going to be covering on a very broad level what the cloud can do for you. Traditional storage methods include things like internal hard drives inside your PC itself. That's where in the past we've stored our data. Next, moving away from there, we've got things like external hard drives, which connect usually via USB. Then we've got more complicated external hard drives. These might use high-speed interfaces like eSATA and USB 3 and have even multiple drives inside for huge mass storage as well as data safety using RAID. Finally, in terms of things that you're going to manage on your own home network, we've got NAS units. So this is not a cloud storage device, but it's closer to the cloud than any of this locally attached stuff because it's still storage that is operating on your network, but this is on your local network. The cloud refers basically to a NAS that is accessed via the internet and controlled by someone other than yourself. So examples of this are Dropbox, where you can just copy your files to this Dropbox folder and they're magically available anywhere. Basically Dropbox just has huge servers that store all of your data in one place so you can access it from anywhere. Even things like social media like Facebook and YouTube. These are also methods of cloud computing and cloud storage because all of your photos will be available anywhere. Uh, all of your videos will be available and accessible from anywhere. Things like Microsoft SkyDrive, Google Drive, uh, which is the replacement for Google Docs. So we're talking videos, music, pictures, documents, whatever it is, you can store it locally using one of these more traditional methods or you can store it in the cloud. The advantages of cloud computing are many. One is it's so economical. These huge companies with massive buying power are buying all these hard drives and they're saying, look, relax, don't worry. We'll take care of your data for it, we'll keep it safe. And the reality of it is, Companies like Google, yeah, they are keeping your data safe. Not only are they using RAID level redundancy within a single machine to ensure that the data is backed up, they're also backing up that entire machine on another machine somewhere else in the data center. Then they're taking that whole data center and they're backing it up on a completely different continent all at the same time. So even an earthquake and a fire at the same time in one of their data centers would not make you lose your data. That's amazing. You can't protect your data that well on your own without investing in expensive equipment, maintaining it regularly, and going through a fair amount of hassle and learning quite a bit about networking as well as about storage. So it's scalable, it's cheap, you can access your data from anywhere, and I mean with things like Dropbox, you're only paying a couple bucks. I mean even Gmail has up to 25 gigs of storage in it. That's amazing for a free service that's supported by ads. Which leads us to some of the disadvantages of cloud computing. By surrendering your data to someone else, you're giving them not only the access to it, but also accountability for it. So if a warrant is served, they don't have to necessarily go through you to get your data. They can actually go to one of these companies, depending on the laws of the country that you happen to reside in. Something to bear in mind. There's also the privacy that you're giving up by allowing someone to go through all of your data. So Facebook's a great example where if you're a young female who is an engaged status, your Facebook page is going to be covered with wedding rings and wedding planners and dresses and all those kinds of ads that are targeted directly to you. That's what pays for Facebook to have enough SSDs to store everyone's homepage to make sure that it's really snappy. Gmail is another great example. You can be reading an email where a friend says, hey, do you want to go to Hawaii and go scuba diving? You're going to see ads for plane tickets. You're going to see ads for scuba diving centers. And all of that is just because the cloud, the data center that is storing all this information is reading it and then bombarding you with the ads that are most likely to pique your interest. Whether you're comfortable with that or not, that's totally up to you. There are some other disadvantages as well, and I went through this a little while ago. If you guys have been watching for a while, you probably saw this, where both of my YouTube channels, NCIXCOM and Linus Tech Tips, were compromised by an account hijacker. So what happened with that is I discovered the advantages and disadvantages of the cloud firsthand. Advantage was that I was eventually able to get it back. Amazing right? To have all of your data deleted, taken away from you, and just by going through Google, I did manage to get it back. Disadvantage, it took a month before I could get anyone's attention to help me restore it. I'm a YouTube partner. You're probably not a YouTube partner. I don't know if anyone would ever get back to you. 
Disadvantage number two, or maybe advantage, I don't know. When all of the videos were restored to the accounts, not only were the videos that I had had on the accounts restored, but also every video I ever deleted from the accounts was restored all at the same time. Test footage, sort of episodes that never got released, all of it was just up there all of a sudden when they did the full account restore. So, another disadvantage of the cloud, nothing is ever gone because these huge data centers exist so they can archive as much information as possible, even information that you don't necessarily want to be there anymore. So, the solution for me is I store most of my data on a Windows home server and I can access that from anywhere. It's kind of like my own personal cloud. I can even browse my own pictures on my phone. And I do use services like Facebook and YouTube because there are huge advantages just with the, the breadth of audience you can reach as well as the ease of use that you get from using cloud computing. However, my personal comfort level with the cloud is, I'd say, very medium because I've had good experiences with the cloud as well as absolutely terrible experiences as well. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips and I'd love for you guys to leave a comment under the video and let me know what's your comfort level with the cloud? What do you guys think? And thumbs up the video if you liked the content today. Don't forget to subscribe.